طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اوكي سو ذا ذا توك از بيزيكلي اباوت اكسرسايز سي سي جي ات از بيج توك سو ات ويل بي فيري ديفيكالت تو كفر ات ان ون سيشن and it has it is basic component and advanced component and uh, the the exercise test is is a widely used uh, investigations yes it is underused not only in sudan even outside sudan in most of the cardiac uh, centers all over the world the exercise treadmill is really i think that my perception i don't have a data but i think it is underused I always start my talk with a picture. So this is a picture. What does it inspire anyone, any volunteer? This is not, there is no right or wrong answer. It is just a photo. Could be related to the talk or could not be related to the talk at all. Someone, someone with artistic eyes, and philosophical analysis. Uh, I think you mean uh, you can look at this uh, optical glass from different angles. So from front, you can see some details. And if you look from different angles, you'll see different details. I think so. What do you think about, about the, the drawing of the looking glass itself? Because so the glass, is, uh, yeah. it seems attached to that uh, uh, pillar. Mm. Uh, the, the two uh, hands of the glass, uh, as if it is, one is tie and the other is uh, as if it is uh, close to that, uh, to that pillar. Mm. Mm. So my take from the photo is basically, this is, uh, this is how, how creative people makes things from nothing. So while everybody is walking around feeling very cold, uh, eyes everywhere, somebody with a creative mind come and draw this glass. Actually, he used the pillar as, as, as uh, one hand of the looking glass and he draws the two uh, uh, lenses in addition to the frame and the other hand of the glass from his own. So he managed to do something from nothing. And, 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 and that is basically my, my view in exercises. Exercises is a very useful investigative tool, but it is usually underused and under uh, studied actually by, by us as a cardiologist. And, and that basically a, a trend, you see it all over the world, whenever there is something which is more diagnostic and more accessible it results in the less diagnostic tools to be underused. And that is the story with the exercise treadmill. So I will try to, to go through uh, this talk and try to convince you, I hope, that exercise treadmill is a very useful investigative tool. And, 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 and basically that is stemming from the fact that exercise treadmill has low sensitivity and, and uh, the, the, the Western, generally speaking, including USA and Europe, they don't like uh, uh, low sensitivity tests because this means that uh, they will not big few of the cases and that will lead, lead to medical legal uh, issues and other things. So that's why, why uh, exercise treadmill for coronary artery disease specifically uh, fall out of uh, fashion. The specificity is not that bad, it is above 75%. Uh, uh, but the low sensitivity resulted in the exercise test to be less appealing to uh, especially uh, interventionists. But looking to, to, to compare it with other tests like stress echocardiogram and nuclear test, it's really not falling that much behind. Yes, when you have a single vessel disease, the, 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 the sensitivity is really very low, but in those who have high burden of coronary artery disease, it's catching up, it go beyond the 80%, for example, in three vessel disease, which is not bad, especially if we are talking about a country with limited resources 
like Sudan, to, to use it as a, a filtering tool, referring those who need really uh, invasive investigation or, or, or more specific uh, functional studies. Uh, to, so it, is, it can be a very good filtering tools in a country like uh, our country. And I think the reason it is being underused because of poor patient selection uh, and the perception that it is only for, to, for diagnosing of coronary artery disease, while it has other tools, even in coronary artery disease, it has other rules. It has prognostic rules, it has therapeutic rules, uh, in addition to it is diagnostic rules. And the other things, the, the casual way we do exercise treadmill, most of the time, we as cardiologists, generally speaking, we don't treat uh, exercise treadmill seriously. We do it in a very casual manner. I remember when I was a cardiology registrar in UK, the exercise treadmill is not covered by a doctor. It is mostly uh, technician-led. And when you are called to supervise exercise uh -huh. because the patient is high risk patient, you really treat it very casually. You don't even read the request form. You just come, step in, uh, sit there, chat up with the technician and the patients and do the exercise treadmill. And uh, you go with uh, what the uh, technician really write in the report and you just basically give you a blessing to it and you say, that's fine, off you go. Uh, and and uh, as I said, the push for more diagnostic tests, especially uh, with the emerging of the CT scan as a, a new investigative tool, which is not invasive, and it is very useful, uh, but don't remember, don't forget that even if it is available, uh, the, the CT scan, you are exposing the patient to one radiation, two contrast, and both of them can have bad effect. Uh, a lot of, of you heard of contrast-induced uh, uh, nephropathy, uh, and uh, the radiation side of the CT scan is significantly reduced with the use of the more advanced type of uh, scanner. But the, 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 the contrast is still a huge issue. And, and the other big thing that is the false positive uh, in women uh, that make it more uh, less appealing for us uh, as investigative tool. So let us talk a little bit about the background of the exercise test. Why, why, why exercise test coming first into investigation? Uh, because the, 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 the high increase in cardiac output and metabolic demand during exercise test is the best way to, 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 to bring out uh, any uh, underlying coronary artery disease and even other things like arrhythmia, cardiopulmonary illness. Uh, as we always say, stress uh, bring out uh, the, the best of us and the worst of us as well. So when you stress people, if they have a concealed coronary artery disease or arrhythmia uh, or even lung disease, you can bring that out. And that's why exercise treadmill phase came in. How it do that? It, it increases the heart rate and that is central point to exercise treadmill. And that is something that we need to look at when we are interpreting, uh, interpreting or uh, analyzing the exercise treadmill. The heart rate is the major part of it. The increase in stroke volume as you can see, play another part of it, but it is not as uh, as essential as exercise as, as the heart rate itself, and and both of these resulting in the increase in the cardiac output. And I think the big player on the increase of the cardiac output is actually the heart rate rather than the stroke volume, because if you look at the stroke volume, the baseline is starting from 90, and the maximum it goes to is 110. So it is percentage wise is not really that much. But if you look at the heart rate, baseline starting at 60, and it can go up to 140 and up to whatever, uh, depending on the patient uh, specifics, uh, age, sex, and, and, and uh, fitness. So it is almost doubling or, or more than doubling of the heart rate. That's why it is very important when we look at exercise treadmill, we look at the response of the heart rate to the exercise treadmill rather than being uh, distracted by the ECG change. The, the arterial pressure is actually uh, consequences of increasing the cardiac output uh, as a result of the increase in heart rate and stroke volume. 
the, 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 the peripheral resistance drop is partially, uh, the, this is physiological, and that is uh, to maintain or to, to improve or boost the, the, the perfusion. Uh, while the oxygen consumption increase in a linear fashion uh, to maintain good oxygenation of the body. There is two components of, of, of uh, which play a role in exercise uh, treadmill. We always look at, at the um, sympathetic component and that's basically increasing the heart rate, but equally important is the parasympathetic component. Uh, the, 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 the graph on the side showing you on the, on the, the A1 is showing you what is the contribution of the uh, both uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic for the exercise treadmill. And if you look, the initial phase, the, the, the initial phase is largely increasing the heart rate due to withdrawal of the vagus uh, nerve effect, is a vagal tone withdrawal, uh, and that can be up to 100 beat per minute. So loss of that in itself can be uh, indicator of poor prognosis. Uh, uh, later in the exercise, then the sympathetic nervous system play a bigger role than the uh, vagus nerve. And in exercise recovery, again, the initial phase is basically coming in of the vagus nerve in the play. So the vagal tone starts to come in and that will lead to uh, the slowing down of the heart rate. And at the latest stage is basically withdrawal of the sympathetic nervous system. So this is very important. Exercises doesn't look only on in, in, in the cardiac function, but it always uh, look at the uh, role of the autonomic nervous system uh, during exercise. And loss of that is boring prognostic indicator. So how we do it? Uh, the, the classical way we do it uh, using the classical uh, treadmill, uh, which most of the patient uh, can use it. Uh, the only issue with it in elderly people and people with disability is a little bit challenging. The, 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 the bike is more appealing now because uh, it is easy to use uh, and uh, from cost-wise, it is less costly than the uh, exercise treadmill machine. The, the, the uh, spine exercise treadmill is, is really a research tool. It is not widely available in clinical practice, but it can be useful in people with uh, inability to exercise neither using the treadmill nor using the, the bike. And the six minutes walk test is, is very important, uh, less costly and useful uh, tool uh, for uh, people with heart failure. It is a part of the complementary actually assessment uh, either monthly or six monthly or annually uh, in each heart failure visit. And it reflects uh, the level of the fitness uh, of the patient with heart failure and it is almost doable by most of the patients. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to talk about it much because the, of the limited time. There is a lot of protocol to be used, but the, the one which used by everybody uh, rules protocol, and it's not because superior to the other, it is because of, of, if, of it is easiness to use. Uh, the, the actually research showing that uh, rammed up the protocol, which basically has a linear uh, exercise uh, Nature is much better than Bruce protocol, but Bruce protocol has been around for a long time and it is uh, easily understandable by most of the people in cardiology. That's why it is uh, widely used and it has three stage uh, 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 in three minutes and it increases in steady state with a little bit of early warm up uh, phase. Uh, I'm not going to go into how to do the exercise treadmill itself in details because it is uh, going to take longer time. So what we do pre-test, pre-test the most important thing that the patient has to be fasting minimally for two hours. 
that's to avoid the the the, the, the splanchnic effect of of a large meal uh, before exercise signal because it 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 could potentially give you uh, misleading uh, result from the from from, from ET like uh, dropping of the blood pressure. Uh, the other important things history. It is important to know the request. Uh, I can tell you a lot of history about people who just came in, supervising, exercise, treadmill, not looking at the request and end up missing the point. For example, a patient be referred mainly for chronotropic incompetence, doing the exercise treadmill, did uh, six minutes, her heart rate hardly increasing by 80 minutes, uh, and the registrar came in writing the report, suboptimal exercise test, uh, not conclusive, uh, please consider other modalities. Why the whole idea of doing the exercise test it was looking at the chronotropic response of the patients. Uh, so he missed the whole point and if not being picked up by somebody else, uh, it would have, uh, have a bad effect on the managing of this patient. For example, if somebody else come and look at that and decided, let us go for a stress echo, or let us do my cardiac perfusion scan, he will miss the whole point of the exercise. And it's uh, always important to know the level of exercise of the patient before going into the treadmill, because some people have no, they are hardly bedridden. And the, because they are walking, coming to you in two legs, doesn't mean that they are be able to do the treadmill test. So this is, it is essential to know what is the baseline level of the exercise uh, of the patient before uh, putting them on the treadmill machine. Examination-wise, you mainly need to look for contra. I put here MEMA, but because that is a common cause of, 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 of uh, problem in exercise treadmill is to have somebody with aortic stenosis or uh, obstructive cardiomyopathy going into treadmill. It is not, you will see in a lot of books, this is contraindication. It is not really contraindication. It, it really needs you to have precaution. You need to know about it because sometimes most of what written in the book as contraindication for exercise treadmill you will find it as indication for exercise treadmill action. A patient with aortic stenosis who is completely asymptomatic, but you do echocardiogram, you find by echocardiogram criteria, he has critical or severe aortic stenosis, but he keep denying symptoms. You can put him on treadmill. In control situation, do uh, a tailored exercise treadmill to try to bring up, up symptoms. And if this patient, for example, become symptomatic very early in stage one of bruised protocol or modified bruised protocol, then that telling you that this patient basically in denial and he needs something to be done about his valve. So the examination is to look for any uh, uh, symptoms or signs or, of heart failure or other what received as contraindication like MEMA of aortic valve stenosis or obstructive cardiomyopathy. And proper footwork, it is very important, especially Women came turn up with a high heel, expecting to do exercise treadmill on high heel, which is beyond my understanding. The test itself, uh, as usual, you do spine and standing tests. Good skin preparation is important. Manual measurement of the blood pressure. A lot of machines have automatic blood pressure me measurement, but it is not accurate. Most of the time, with the patient being in motion, it gives you wrong reading so it is always better to use a manual reading and 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 try not to lock yourself in one protocol or uh, one uh, type of of of, of uh, exercise treadmill always try to be flexible flexible and individualize your protocol to the patient sometimes you can hold uh, most of the treadmill machine have ability to hold you in one stage for example you do this the exercise treadmill starting at normal bruise protocol, you have seen the blood pressure is starting to increase very quickly, heart rate is start to increase very quickly. Hold this, the exercise treadmill, for example, at stage one, and a lot of machine will give you that uh, abilities, uh, rather than terminating the exercise test, or change to modified bruise if, 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 if you think the patient will not be able to get into the second stage of the exercise. So individualize the protocol according to the patient specific uh, during exercise or even before the exercise. 
the, the, the standard component of the exercise treadmill is the heart rate, blood pressure, workload, and the ECG change. In addition to the cardiopulmonary, cardiopulmonary are many and uh, basically they are part of the advanced exercise treadmill uh, teaching. Uh, so I may address that in future uh, when we look at uh, cardiopulmonary exercise, especially in heart failure patients. The reporting, it is very important not to report the time of the exercise, how long the patient did. It is important to report how much, uh, much uh, meds he did, and we, I will speak about meds and why it is important. And when you look at the ST, always remember to look at the ST elevation from the J junction uh, and the ST depression, as we always know, horizontal and down sloping is the one which we should look for. Up sloping of, of uh, ST chain during exercise is has very low specificity for ischemia. And always look at the ECG raw data rather than looking at the computerized uh, filter data, which will give you more uh, idea that how good the quality of the exercise test itself. And, and most of the people tend to shorten the recovery time in interest of time or because they are hurry to do something else. It is always important really to wait and give the patient enough time to recover. Normally six minutes is the standard. Uh, but if the patient require more than that, always do that. And there is the, now the cool down walk is being uh, largely avoided. It is not necessary. Uh, always terminate the exercise and put the patient to buy in position. And tailor the report according to the request and try to include prognostic score in your report. And this is just to tell where is the junction, the, the J junction. It's basically the junction between the end of the QRS and the beginning of the ST segment. And that's why we should measure the ST elevation or ST depression. Similar here, we are looking at the ST depression. And again, you have to first know where is your J junction before uh, coming to the conclusion there is ST elevation or ST depression. So what is MET? MET basically is, is, is a metabolic equivalent when you are doing nothing. So somebody who's just sitting down, relaxing, is basically using one MET. So that is what is essential to keep us alive, basically. It differs according to the uh, patient specific, thyroid status, obesity, if he has any other comorbidities. And generally speaking, most of the daily activity is four or less meds. Uh, so that's why meds is important. And the Bruce stages, basically each one of them is equivalent to one of the meds. So stage one, combination of stage one is five meds. And anything below five meds has bad prognostic or bad prognostic indicator. And it can be up to 20. I have seen a patient managed to do 18 minutes of exercise treadmill. Young guy who is very fit and it was done for looking for arrhythmia, basically. So why, why we are obsessed with MET rather than the, the, the timing on the exercise? The MET is important because if you look at prognostic data, for example, relative risk of, risk of developing coronary artery disease, if you look at data based on METs, it's telling you how important the meds. For example, those who are less than five with high BMI, more than 30, the risk of developing coronary artery disease is well above two. So that's why we are obsessed with meds rather than the time or exercise treadmill because the time or exercise treadmill can be variable depending on what protocol you have used. But the meds is is, is reflective uh, and calculated according to the workload uh, you use in the machine. Duke score, uh, I would not talk much about it, but it is, it is very useful if you can calculate Duke score at the end of your reporting of the uh, treadmill. And it is easy to calculate. Uh, the equation is very clear. Uh, minus five multiplied by ST segment deviation in millimeter minus four multiplied by exercise engine index and the engine index you calculate it easily zero no exercise engine one uh, engine okay two very severe engine okay 
the the the, the angina index a little bit of subjective things and uh, but it is useful especially if you have the textbook angina symptoms and the reason uh, the UK score is the most uh, used one because it, it has a very good uh, relation to mortality and actually it is even better than uh, general cardiologists in calculating the risk of or, or average annual risk of mortality minus 11 associated with 5 percent mortality if it is my plus 4 to minus 10 mortality is up to 4 percent and those who are low risk they have mortality rates than 0.5 percent what are the indication of the so far is 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 the talk understandable or any question before i go for indications it is okay very nice you can proceed dr hussein so uh, the, the indication the, i divided it in three things diagnostic prognostic and therapeutic and and the last junk of the diagnostic one is is in coronary artery disease and in coronary artery disease is mainly now and i i must say that's basically because of of, of the politics of doing things is become mainly of use in stable ischemic heart disease while it can be very useful even in unstable ischemic heart disease there is a lot of what we call unstable ischemic heart disease we 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 call it uh, subjectively we don't have objective data so somebody coming to you with chest pain is high risk yes but he has no ecg change and he's negative troponin uh, most of the time this type of patient especially in uh, a country with limited resource can be saved well if you do exercise in control situation you can really know who of them need an immediate attention and an agent investigation and, and uh, I say gray cases. Gray cases, this is the type of patients who keep coming with chest pain, non coronary artery disease, being investigated, and he still keep coming. You optimize his anti angina medications, you do functional studies like myocardial perfusion scan or stress echo, and still they keep coming to you with chest pain. You even do a few times. So you fed up, you don't know what, what type of, I have a patient last week like that, a Bangladeshi guy, he keep coming to the hospital, he have five admissions after his MI with what he called chest pain. And at one occasion he has angio, which was showing the stent which has been done was patent and he has no really flow limiting residual disease. And I put him in treadmill and he started to scream with pain at early stage. And you progress in the treadmill, try to keep encouraging, keep going, keep going, and no ECG change, no drop in the blood pressure. Heart rate response was very good. It's most likely cardiac neurosis rather than a true cardiac disease. Arrhythmia, and arrhythmia, it, 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 it is very useful, and I will show you a case later on how it is useful to use a ex exercise treadmill in, in arrhythmia. Uh, and valve disease, as I just as mentioned earlier, people who have uh, by echocardiography, clinically significant valve disease, but you never know uh, if they are symptomatic or not symptomatic. They keep to say to you that I am not symptomatic, I don't have anything, I'm feeling okay. The moment you put them in treadmill, you can really pick up those who are true symptomatic and uh, then they will need uh, uh, an intervention. How come it has two roles actually? It has diagnostic role uh, uh, where somebody with a uh, of obstructive cardiomyopathy, but no significant gradient when you uh, do echo. Uh, when you do exercise treadmill, even without echo, you have to do it with echo, to be honest, to look if there is any significant increase in, in, in gradient uh, during uh, uh, stress exercise. But sometimes, merely looking at the blood pressure response can give you a clue if this patient have uh, significant hemodynamically significant uh, obstruction to the outflow tract. Uh, drop of the blood pressure indicate is indicative of that. So even when you don't have a, a, a handy echo machine, you can do uh, exercise treadmill in this type of patient, and it can tell you if this patient has significant uh, obstruction to the outflow tract, and then you can decide what to do about it. 
Okay, so let us start with the case now. So this is 39 years old male, come with a tight feeling across his chest whenever he's going to the mosque, which is about two miles away, uh, and goes away with this. No other risk factor for coronary artery disease, and that's his ECG. So any volunteers, let us make it interactive. Obviously not Hatim. <laughs> One of the photos. Uh, uh, in, in V1, we have the right bundle branch block, uh, which is RRSR pattern. Uh, uh, first of all, it is sinus rhythm. Mm -hmm. uh, right bundle branch block. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have ST elevation in the AVR. Uh, Do you call that ST elevation? Wallahi, who are each bit of Buruga? This more. T wave inversion plus induce him to the as a corona. This sometimes is expected as a repolarization change associated with right bundle branch block. So, what would you do for this patient? There is ST depression in lead three. You have ST depression in lead three. And some bradycardia. Mm -hmm. So what would you do? So normally he's coming to you if he's coming, if, he, if uh, it will be wise because of the ECG change, which we, it could be part of the polarization. Would you go for angio or would you go for CT or would you do something? Angio, coronary angio. Okay, let us give you alaykum salam wa barakatuh. So let us give you the options. No, he's a lot, so lot somebody of said, don't waste time, go for angio. Somebody give, said, give me a break, we can do CT angio here. And somebody said, bow on me, you don't have a stress echo in your hospital. And the other guy said, common sense is not common anymore. Put the guy in treadmill. So who, who will vote for going for treadmill? Well, he's still young, I will go with D. He's young and we can stress him. D. Because he's low yeah. risk. Uh, yes, but yes. I think when you look at the ECG change, you would say that this is right on the branch block. There is some change, which could be rubberization change, which could be ischemic change. It will be wiser if you do just blood test. You do troponin. If it is negative, nobody will yes. argue with you if you put this patient in treadmill test. And 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 basically, this is a, the, the diamond and uh, foster the... Uh, probability, pre-probability test calculation for coronary artery disease. And it advocate to use actually exercise treadmill to all intermediate grade type. It, I, I prefer it, it is similar. It is much simpler than what uh, the, the, the European and the UK use. UK put uh, uh, in play the, the other comorbidities. They put uh, the uh, risk factors, hypertension, diabetes, and others in the equation. But this is very simple. It is just put three things, the age, the sex, and what is the nature of the chest pain? Is it typical or atypical? And based on that, it put people in, in, in uh, intermediate, high, low, uh, uh, and very low. And basically that's, that's in percentage, those who are low 5%, those who are intermediate 10 to 90%, those who are high are 90% risk of having coronary artery disease. The only problem with it, the intermediate group is a large range. And when it is a large range, you are really uh, most likely going to put some high risk patient on treadmill. Uh, that's the only issue. So, you find some people will suggest to use 75% at the upper limit of the intermediate group rather than going for the 90% mark. And, and all intermediate, unless they are unstable, you can really use exercise treadmill and it can give you useful inf information in this type of patients. So with this patient, he's 39. Yes, he's a male. The pain he's describing, and the typical pain, what is the typical pain? Somebody from the fellows? When we say typical pain, what are we? Uh, three criteria, retrosternal tightening. 
Yes. Uh, it is increased with effort. Yes. And uh, relief by uh, rest or uh, natural release rest, sublingual natural release rest. Yes. So if the pain fulfills that criteria, it is regarded as a typical. And if we use this, he's less, he's 39 or years old. He's a male. He is having typical chest pain. So he's in the intermediate group. And it will be perfectly okay, uh, provided that you don't have any high other high risk features to put this patient on treadmill. I would say high risk feature, if this guy, for example, tell me that he start to have this chest pain very early when he's walking to the mosque. The mosque is two miles away. So that's the way the history is important. You really need to know when did he start to have the pain. If the pain start coming to you, when you just start to walk to the mosque, the early phase of your journey to the mosque, or it happened late in the journey, it happened when you are about to arrive at the mosque, it makes difference. If he's telling me that I just walk a hundred yard or feet and I start to have the pain and keep continuing till I reach the mosque, and when I sit down in the mosque or start to do my uh, the masjid, the pain start to get less and less and it go away after I finish the prayer, then I will be concerned. I would not really put this patient on treadmill because he has angina in a very minimal effort and this is high risk feature. So history is important and we should, we sh we should not really be uh, only directed by the guidelines and what we see in front of us. History is very important. I, I, I always believe history is the most important tools in all type of medicine and in cardiology especially. So this patient D will be perfectly okay, provided that the chest pain happened after a good effort, not early in his uh, treadmill. Any, any, any other opinion? Anybody think something different or have a different opinion? Uh, okay, so, so. okay, so coronary testing, are, uh, normally clinical presentation, risk of coronary artery disease, and try to drive the uh, pre probability test. And if it is less than 10, uh, I would say less than five, 10% is really high, no testing. Intermediate 10 to 20 is stress testing. High, you really need to go to more specific tests like angiography. Uh, in the high group, if the patient coming is still as outpatient, um, some people argue that uh, CT angiogram is as good as uh, invasive coronary angiogram, and that will be perfectly okay. Uh, and as I said, uh, if somebody in the intermediate group assess the ECG, if it is good for uh, exercise treadmill, and that's basically excluding left bundle branch block. Uh, uh, if the patient uh, can exercise, go for treadmill test and do Duke score, if the exercise treadmill come back positive, you will go to uh, angiography. If the patient baseline abnormal ECG, which you, you cannot or he cannot exercise, then go for other type or other modality of functional tests like myocardial perfusion, scan, stress, echo, or others. So if we did the test in that patient and that was the result we get, what do you think? Any one of you guys? Positive test, not positive test. This is Abu Slobin uh, state depression. I think that is yes. low sensitivity. Yes, so Before. this is really negative. It is uh, not really significant because it is ST uh, Abu Slobin. Here, same patient, but his exercise treadmill came with that result. That's the resting V6, that is exercise at eight and 15 minutes, that's exercise at 12 minutes, and that recovery 30 seconds. What do you think, positive or negative? Anyone, any volunteer? Who think it is positive? Shall we have a vote? We have how many people? We have 18 people, excluding seniors. Can we vote? 
who think it is positive and who think it is negative? Uh, I think at 12 minutes, uh, there is a horizontal ST depression. Okay. At 12 minutes, yeah. So, so this, will, this will go as a positive test. Okay. What is the caveat or what is the catch? There is a catch. The catch, the ST change start at, happen at a very high wake load. Most of the time, when the, even the typical ST change happen at a high level of work, if you look at 850, which is a reasonable level of work, there is no significant ST depression. It only happened at 12 minutes. And the other thing that it, it, it start to go back to the normality very quick on the recovery, 30 seconds in recovery, and you see that the ST depression start to become less. So this is sometimes can be false positive test. Yes, you will take it in consideration, but here where the risk score will become very important. If you use Duke score, this patient will come with a low Duke score and is really have unlikely to have uh, obstructive coronary artery disease. So even if the typical ECG change happen, but if it happened at a high level of exercise and it came back quickly to normal to normalization at the recovery, then this could be a false positive. And in this type of patient, uh, risk score, Duke score can be very helpful. Any question? Okay. Uh, so what we measured in, in exercise treadmill, we measure a lot of things, but uh, I circled the heart rate, heart rate, heart rate, because I found it increasingly ignored by, by juniors. They always obsessed with ST change and they are obsessed with, 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 with the level of heart rate uh, comparable to the target heart rate. And, and both of these are, are very, uh, are sometimes have no really good prognostic indicator. The reaching of the target heart rate, if the patient uh, was not able to reach uh, 85, uh, it has prognostic significance, but sometimes the patient doesn't reach the target heart rate mainly because he doesn't want to exercise. He's too scared to reach the target heart rate or he's uh, over medicated or wrongly used medication before coming for the exercise treatment. Try to look at the other things, the, heart rate index, the chronotropic failure, because that can have a better prognostic indication than just target heart rate. Uh, uh, for example, uh, yes, failure to reach uh, maximum heart target heart rate if the patient doing exercise is indicative of chronotropic incompetence, but we need to uh, look at the any patient in an in individual way why they are not reaching the target heart rate. The slow recovery is more sensitive than the target heart rate and the heart rate, heart rate reserve is even better. And if you look at uh, the recovery, heart rate recovery, if you look at uh, just failure to, uh, to, to drop the heart rate by 22 beats in two minutes from uh, stopping of the exercise, the mortality is significantly high, even with those who have did a good amount of exercise. And the heart rate response with coronary artery disease had the worst prognosis. If you look at this curve, the, the, the bearable line is people who have obstructive coronary artery disease or clinically significant coronary artery disease and abnormal heart rate response. But look at those who just have abnormal heart rate response, which is the uh, brown or purple it's not, it is brown or uh, grayish or I don't know, goldish color. They, they even do bad. Uh, it is even worse than people who have obstructive coronary artery disease only, the green line. So just heart rate response can be a predictor of poor prognosis without even coronary artery disease. Uh, other poor prognostic indicator limiting angina at low level of exercise, less than five minutes, failure of blood pressure to increase more than 120 systolic, and significant uh, ST change at a low level of exercise 
and sustained rhythm, especially VT. VT uh, rhythm, if it is sustained during exercise, it is more uh, in this uh, prognostic indicator. So case 256 years old, recent MI, primary BCI, admitted twice, both discharged with chest pain, and that's his ECG. So what should we do for him? Keep coming back twice. I think it uh, it can be same. We can take proper history and do troponin. Uh, if troponin is negative, then we can proceed to stress him. Okay, his troponin is basically going the down direction. The, the admission troponin, for example, was more than twenty five thousand. Now his troponin is around ten thousand. High sensitivity troponin. His MI was about two weeks ago. So, yeah. uh, so not wrongly, although the ECU wasn't showing really anything much, uh, the, the, uh, the, the intervention is decided to go for repeat angio and that's showing beta is sent in the RCA. Will you send him home? Or you want to do something else? Well, I can stress him for ischemia. Why? Uh, this, uh, the the stent in the ARC is patent and there is no flow limiting residual disease in other arteries. So why you want to stress him for ischemia? What are you thinking? So th this patient is one of the things that uh, we know inferior MI frequently associated with uh, conduction system disease. VSR? Uh, some of them, uh, no, he has no VSR, the echo is fine. Uh, mm. We know conduction system disease is very frequent with inferior MI. They have complete heart blocks, they can have sinus, bradycardia. And, and this patient uh, actually, to be honest, uh, even I wasn't keen to exercise him, just reassure and send home. He was in a small dose of beta blocker. But because he was coming twice, we decided to put him in treadmill. And up to stage two of the exercise treadmill, his heart rate hardly went beyond 80 beat per minute. So indicating this patient has chronotropic incompetence and that could be the reason of, of, of his uh, chest pain. And what we decided, we decided to discontinue his beta blocker as well, his small dose, short acting metoprolol, I think it was 25 milligram. And after stopping his beta blocker, funny enough, his pain settled down. Uh, sometimes this type of patient can come back to you because from time to time they will go into tachycardia, although they have baseline bradycardia. Uh, and and th this type of patient, if, if you give them beta blocker to slow them down, they will become the chronotropic incompetence. So this is one of the class two indication of pacing. If the patient have to have beta blocker to control his coronary artery disease, and when you give him beta blocker, he go brady, then you, you may have to give him pacing as a class two indication. So this is one of the things that exercise treadmill is the best thing to pick it up. Uh, uh, you could do halter by all means, but halter uh, take times and uh, need uh, analysis, but exercise treadmill you do there and, in, and you get a, an answer for, for, the, for, for, for the question you have in your mind. This is another guy, 32 years old, the Spanish man presented to hospital after a second episode of syncope immediately following exercise. His vitals were normal and that's his ECG. Anything? Significant? Anybody? The problem, I don't know who's the fellows, who's the seniors, so I don't want to pick up on. 
كيف حاتم نور؟ كلنا فلس ما عدا دكتور حاتم اه؟ كلهم فلس؟ كلنا تقريبا ايوه طيب طيب يعني ان شاء الله يبيكم بيبل يا يو كان تشوز راندملي كان تشوز راندملي طيب معاويه انا دكتور يلا جو اهيد تيل مي وات دو يو ثينك اباوت ذا اي سي جي؟ اوكي تي ساينس ريزم And uh, there is dominant R wave in V1 and early transition at the V2. Mm -hmm. uh, the PR interval is very short. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it seems short. Yeah. It seems uh, short, but it is within normal. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and AVL, uh, it, it seems as isoelectric. ABL lead. Isoelectric, yes. So when you see a dominant wave, dominant R wave in V1, what else you want to look at? The the B wave in uh, in the inferior leads. And Why? also I can look to the ST. Uh, either it can be RVH or I can uh, think about uh, Yes, RVH. So if it's RVH, what, what can help you more than the B-Wave? The axis. The axis, yes. So if the axis is normal, it is unlikely to be RVH. True? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yes, there is dominant uh, uh, R-Wave in V1, unlikely to be due to... Uh, RVH, but with that ECG, most of the people will do echocardiogram. Echocardiogram done and show us showing a structure in normal heart. What else can you do? Obviously, we are studying exercise ECG, so we are going to do exercise ECG. And that is exercise ECG. This is like actually a case being uh, reported in BMJ. You can see clearly during exercise, tachycardia, and that is recovery phase in the middle. His heart rate started to cool down, but all of a sudden went to sinus mm. arrest. You don't see any P wave till this P wave. So we call this sinus arrest. And uh, mm. what do you think uh, the underlying mechanism of this? How old is patient? Okay, I will give you the case history back. He's 32 years old. 32. I can think of arrhythmia, cardiomyopathy, causing this arrhythmia. So, what is the mechanism? So, if it is arrhythmia, cardiomyopathy, what kind of arrhythmia, arrhythmia, cardiomyopathy will cause? Remember, this patient can cause mainly VT, but this is not VT. Yeah, it causes VT. Uh, uh, it causes VT, but this is a uh, sinus arrest. This is sinus arrest. So, what is it? Okay, Maria, we picked on you enough. Let us pick on Rayan. What do you think, Rayan? Carlos hypersensitivity. What? Sorry, pardon. Carotid hypersensitivity. Aortic hypersensitivity or carotid? Oh, carotid hypersensitivity. Uh, is this the typical age of carotid hypersensitivity? And does the carotid hypersensitivity happen like this? No. No. Yes. You, they, they, they really, you need, you need something to brace on the carotid to, to give you the carotid hypersensitivity. Hmm. Could be vagal, vagal syndrome associated with this arrhythmogenic myopathies? Why everybody think it is erythmogenic myopathy? If the ECG apart from the dominant R wave in V1, nothing else. And if the echo showing a structure in normal heart, how can it be erythmogenic? So it could be a syndrome. Yes, uh, simple things, yeah. This is typical, actually, both exercise vasovagal syncope due to high vagal torque. Uh, it happens, that's why the general advice, if you, if you are doing exercise, 
especially high intensity exercise, even if you don't have this vesivagal uh, syndrome, try to cool down. Normally exercise, warm up by warm down. And, uh, that's why you see a lot of people who do jogging or running around uh, to those who uh, went to Europe. They, you will see them when they come to a traffic light, they will keep uh, running in, in, in place. So they will keep jogging while they are still. So they, they will not stop. Because that is the, the, the sudden withdrawal of sympathetic tone and coming back of the vehicle tone result in this. They can sometimes develop two to one blocks. They can sometimes develop sinus arrest and collapse. So what is the treatment? Simply to avoid the strenuous exercise, he can, he can have cross legs uh, when he when he is uh, having a long time exercise. He can use some physiological maneuvers. Do you want something before you giving him any advice? What to do? I have to do a tilt table test. Tilt table test. I don't to show you. Good exercise, good, good history is the most important tool available to any doctor. Yes. So what do you want to know in history? Family history of uh, Sudan Kardec. Uh, yeah, yeah, symbol, symbol. symbol. Um, symbol. You know, what, um, if he is going to cardiac or bradycardic, if he is feeling any diagnosis in hand. We know this patient has, we, we said this patient, this is very vagal, okay? Yes. Due to high vagal tone. What, before you yes. give advice to anybody with very vagal syncope, what do you want to know in their history? The Bring a syn um, syncope. Okay, two syncope type. Okay. type for everybody. The most important, information in history in somebody whom you diagnose with vagal syncope is if he has a good prodromal symptoms. That's the most important thing. Does he have, get enough warning? For example, does he feel dizzy for a while? Does he feel hot flushes? Uh, does he feel uh, lightheaded and for a while? Because that is what determines the management. If the patient have good warning symptoms within good time, then most of these patients, lifestyle advice is enough for them. Plenty of fluid, when you are exercising, uh, try to warm up and warm down slowly, uh, have a salt. When you come back from exercise, try immediately to lie flat, avoid to have heavy meal, avoid taking shower after exercise, all this general advice. So the most important point in history to know about this patient, how much warning you have and how long for. Do you get, for example, dizziness for a few seconds and then next thing that you are in the floor or you get dizziness for a while, you feel dizzy for maybe a good minute. One minute is enough actually. One. 30 seconds is a very good warning. So if he has a good warning, lifestyle modification is enough. But if this patient have no warning at all, he just feel momentarily lightheaded or dizzy and next thing that he's in floor, then that make a big difference. Here, uh, you really need to use other intervention tool, so like uh, uh, giving them medications or tight teddy stocking. And sometimes even most of the uh, uh, literature physiologists will recommend pacing in this type of patient if they don't have any warning at all. Because if they don't have any warning, the risk of not not from blacking out from the vesicular syncope, but the risk of sustaining a major injury, because we have a lot of stair lift, a lot of uh, people going on the stairs. If he has any collapse in one of these uh, area, he may sustain a fracture or something like that. So sometimes it is very important, and sometimes people do tilt table tests just to see how much of warning he has. The tilt table test, because it measures the heart rate and the blood pressure very frequently, it can 
been point when the heart rate go down and when the blood pressure go down. And you try to correlate between the symptoms of the patient and the onset of the bradycardia, for example, and uh, hypotension. If the symptoms lagging uh, behind mean that the symptoms are very late in comparison or late in comparison of the drop in the heart rate and the blood pressure, then this patient has enough warning and lifestyle advices are mainly enough. And this patient actually treated by lifestyle advice. He didn't require permanent pacemaker. Uh, prognostic indication of, in any question about that case or shall I go to the other slide? It's okay. That is okay. Okay. So the, the prognostic indicator is, is mainly post-acute post coronary syndrome. Uh, and, and most of the time people use it uh, to, to see if the residual disease is a cause of problem. Sometimes if you have a residual disease and uh, you don't think that you should do anything about it, even if you have a positive uh, IFR or FFR uh, and you start the patient medical treatment, but uh, you don't know how truthful the patient, then you can put them on treadmill and see if they develop chest pain or ECG change uh, during exercise. And to, to sometimes to guide therapy, sometimes even for beta blocker, I have seen people who do exercise treadmill to, to see how adequate the dose of the beta blocker they are giving. Uh, they can decide about how to increase the beta blocker depending on what happened to the heart rate of the patient during exercise treadmill. Uh, arrhythmia, as I said, sometimes response to treatment for uh, arrhythmia, uh, especially in uh, VT, uh, sometimes can use exercise treadmill. And in arrhythmia exercise tunnel, sometimes BVCs, people who side bear them of BVCs, you want to see if their BVC increases exercise. And if that is the case, you may give them advice to avoid high intensity exercise. In heart failure, uh, it is mainly to guide transplant time and optimization of medication. And here you really need the cardiopulmonary part of the exercise treadmill, not a mere basic standard exercise treadmill. Uh, the therapeutic indication, it is mainly for exercise pres prescription for all types of, of, of cardiovascular disease, coronary artery disease, heart failure, inheritable arrhythmia, that's what I mentioned here, but even cardiomyopathy, even those who have rheumatic heart disease, all type of cardiac disease, sometimes exercise can make you more comfortable to tell them what to do and what not to do, rather than just give them uh, general advice, which is basically one size fit all. It is not really necessarily uh, correct. Uh, exercise prescription can be best guided by doing exercise treatment. Not necessarily bruise protocol, you can do similar type of exercise. Uh, the device optimization for uh, biventricular pacemaker and uh, Brady pacing is beyond this talk, so I will not talk much about it. Termination, the, mo the message from termination, do not terminate because of reaching target heart rate. That's the most important. The other things are standard. Most of the people terminate the exercise treatment because the patient reaches a target heart rate. While it will give you more information, if you carry on exercising the patient till he reach his personal limits or he reach a high uh, level exercise treadmill, uh, it, it have better prognostic uh, indicator. And, and we know the, 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 the exercise, uh, the, the target heart rate could be easily miscalculated by using the general equation of 220 minus the age of the patient. So do not stop the exercise treadmill because the patient reached the target heart rate. Uh, the others are classical uh, indication for terminating the exercise treatment. The last one, which patient want to stop, try always, especially if there is no good reason. If the patient tell you that I'm feeling dizzy or uh, I have uh, severe pain, uh, that's fair enough. But patient just want to stop because he cannot really do more. Sometimes they do more with a little bit of encouragement. I have seen people manage to do six minutes after they said they want to stop just by a little bit of encouragement. Okay, another case, 20 years old lady, her brother died suddenly in Scotland, no diagnosis given to her. She came to you, you do that ECG, she has no family history of sudden death before. You did that ECG, 
What else you want to do? Okay, in interest of time, I will go to what else because we already beyond one hour. I don't want to give you all. So this is one of the classical indication of exercise treatment. You obviously will do echocardiogram to look for any other structural disease, but exercise treatment has important uh, role in this type of, of scenarios. Uh, people with family history of sudden death, no clear diagnosis uh, given to them. And um, uh, yeah, the ECG baseline is normal. It is very important to do echo and exercise treatment. And you see this patient baseline, her QT interval is normal. Just standing with a heart rate reaching 80 beat per minute, her QT went to 588. And heart rate one more reached 119, the QT reached 585, 58, sorry. And it came down in recovery within the normal limit of the corrected QT. So this is a classical example, ECG here, diagnostic basically exercise treatment, giving you the diagnosis in a uh, golden tray. So long QT, uh, then off you go, treat the patient as long QT, do your genetic workup, uh, give beta blocker and keep following the patient. This is another patient, 20 years old boy with his inevitable finding of WBW, denying any symptoms. You put them in exercise treadmill. You, you see in the left side, all the leads showing conduction both through the conduction system and the accessory pathway. But very early in exercise, the conduction through the accessory pathway start to become intermittent. You see the narrowing of the QRS. Everybody can see the narrowing of the QRS after the six beats from the left yeah 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 it is clear yeah it's very clear and then intermittently you see broad complex mm -hmm. which conducting through the accessory pathway and at the end of the screen on the right side you see clearly now this is pure nodal conduction no conduction through the accessory pathway so here exercise random threat telling you that this accessory pathway is not of prognostic significant although uh, EB guys love to play with their toys. Sometimes they will come and argue with you that, okay, the accessory pathway uh, specific can be changed by giving isoprenaline during EB study. So you have to do invasive study rather than exercise treadmill. But in limited resources in Sudan, where is it? so far I don't know anybody doing EB there, exercise treadmill is as good as anything. So this is a case which I have done recently, uh, 47 years old, Saudi guy who's coming with recurrent funny things. And that's his ECG when he came to see another consultant in clinic and he referred me uh, uh, the patient based on that ECG. So what is the ECG showing? If nobody volunteered, let me pick up on somebody. Mm -hmm. So, what year as a fellow are you? The one who's answering. Year one, year two, or year three? Life shame, like year three. <laughs> year three. Wait. Okay. If you are year three, I want more from you, yeah, year three. So you see in BVCs like this, how can you tell where is it coming from? Anybody? Fin nas tawan khashim bi asab ibtaat mobilat wala bi asab computer. Let us speak with Dell, the Dell guy. Okay, Doctor. How are you, Doctor Hussein? Alhamdulillah. Yes, uh, I'm Doctor Yasin Isa. Hi, Yasin. Bismillah. Good day. Hi, Yasin. Bismillah. So uh, the ECG showing it is sinus rhythm with the normal axis and showing the PVCs. In some areas, it looks uh, cobbled. 
Uh, it is originated uh, most likely from the, the RVOT because uh, these um, premature bits they are coming and V1 they are negative so they are coming from the right side and in the inferior leads they are positive so they are coming from upward yes. and F also is negative. Okay. What else can support you to, to say that it is coming basically from the outflow track? about from the inferior leads? Um, the AVR, the AVR, the AVR, the AVR, the AVR, yes. It's suggesting that it is coming. But if you look at the AVR, it has two morphology. It has uh, both negative, negative. and positive, yes. yes. How can you explain that? Maybe that, 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 it's not bidirectional. There are sometimes uh, what we call localized re-entry. The first beat is truly uh, uh, BVC. The second one could be a localized re-entry arrhythmia. But uh, the reason actually, if you say it is sinus reason, you may not be wrong, but if you look at it, you have two sinus beat followed with two BVCs in a couplet. This, this is a type of arrhythmia which which I, 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 I engineered the name competing VT and sinus rhythm because they are almost equal. The sinus and the VT are equal. So he come with ECCG. So clearly everybody's scared. We want to admit him. Patient in denial, doesn't want to come to the hospital. I'm fine. I don't want anything. And he went home. And he keep coming back to the clinic. Each time he will say that, I, sometimes I feel dizzy. What else you can do? I bring him actually for ablation. I managed to convince him to ablation. And on the day of the ablation, I didn't manage to see a single BBC coming. This is his ECG actually when I bring him for exercise treadmill. But during the procedure, it was like this. So we do what we call sometimes pace mapping. You try to pace map and see morphology near to the BVC you have seen on the clinical ECG and then go after it and ablate on that area. It is very uh, low specificity. Uh, to be honest, to the extent that I doubt uh, is this ECG is the ECG on this patient or uh, it has a, this ECG done with somebody else and by mistake put in the note of the patient. Because his ECG uh, retest is completely normal. You don't see a single BVC and during the day of the procedure, it was the same. So I decided uh, to do a Holter monitor. Done twice the Holter monitor, twice came negative. It was showing minimal BVCs. Uh, it was 27 in one and I think 32 in another uh, Holter. And they were done actually a while about. One done uh, early 2020 and the one done in the middle of uh, 2020. So when I was... Uh, run of options, I decided to put him on treadmill. And this is just six minutes and 19 seconds on treadmill. I have seen the typical BVCs coming out and they are getting more seven minutes, continue to recovery and go back to normal late in recovery. About, I think, I cannot, sorry, I was, my mistake, I hold the ECG while my hand is full of alcohol and result in this black thingy. I think it was four minutes, 50 seconds on recovery, the BBC disappeared completely. So here exercise treadmill gave me a very valuable information. This guy have, have BBCs and it is exercise inducible. Although during the procedure, I gave him uh, isoprenaline, but Sometimes the isoprenaline infusion has this paradoxical effect. If you increase the heart rate too much, it could suppress uh, other arrhythmia if the arrhythmia is not, is not too fast to overcome the sinus rhythm. So I brought him back for another procedure. This time I was using small amount of isoprenaline and I managed to bring out his BVCs and ablated it successfully. So exercise treadmill, symbol, give me a very useful information in this patient. Uh, so I reached the end of my talk. So the main take home message 
from my talk today? Can somebody give me a take-home message before I say what is my take-home message? As a question, Dr. Hussein. So, as for the previous patient, uh, what's our final diagnosis? For, for the patient, the, the arrhythmic case, it is, our, uh, it is coming from the RVOT posterior okay. septal area. So, it is uh, idiopathic? It is idiopathic. He's normally, his echo is normal, his MRI is normal. It is idiopathic. Okay. Uh, but, uh, it's coming okay. from the Taban, there is a lot of theory to explain why people develop, develop RVOT, BVCs. Mostly the, the one which is appealing to everybody, uh, a remnant of conduction system uh, is there in the RVOT or LVOT and start to uh, fire uh, later on live and give people BVCs. Most of the time uh, it is uh, benign, but sometimes it can be troublesome. And if left not treated, it can lead to uh, BVC induced cardiomyopathy. So, take home message. I want take home message from you before I give my take home message. We will start to disappear. So, we only have 12 now. We started with 18 or 19, and now we are 12. So, people are running away. So, take home message. Hawaii guy, who's Hawaii? Or wow, which is Huawei. Okay. Huawei mobile phone. Who's that? Somebody hiding behind. Maha, Maha. Maha, طيب يا Maha. كلمينا يا Maha. What is the take home message? أنا قاعد. Maha, كلمينا. Take home message. كلامي ده كله خارم بارم ولا فيه فائدة؟ بها ما دارت ورينا طيب محمد كم محمد في محمد واحد محمد تيك هوم مسج السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته تيك هوم مسج انه الستريس اي سي جي ممكن نستعمله في ما الكلاسيكال جسفر انجينا ممكن نستعمله في الاريزميا في الهار فيليا فدي حاجة يعني very impressive. Okay. جميل. طيب في رباح ولا ربا؟ عثمان. رباح. رباح. رباح عثمان. يلا يا رباح طيب. Take home message. Okay. I'm agreeing with the first one. Not just for ischemia. We can use it for other modalities, or if me as an explosion and other help me in other comparing other uh, diagnoses. Wait, somebody else take home message. Adam Musa. Uh, <clears throat> for termination, you should have uh, uh, looking looking for the patient, ask the patient about symptom of. Uh, uh, dizziness, uh, fatigue, uh, chest pain, and looking at the imaging or reading for change in the ECG, uh, the sigma derivation, arrhythmias, and so on. Okay. Sarah? Mm -hmm. Wait, what do you want take home message with Tatiana? Talata or Basitat? أول تيك هو مسج قلت إنه إي تي ريمين على البورد. Sorry I'm duty so I'm coming and go. Yes that's fine that's fine. So it is still a very important tool to use in coronary artery disease. Thorough review and interpretation are essential to benefit from the wealth of information in offer and can be of high value if used in correct patients. So just to sum up. Thank you so much, Dr. Hussain. Allah, this is really, and yeah, I enjoyed it so much. And uh, I think, yeah, you guys, if you have any questions, you have the chance with Dr. Hussain. So, chances for questions. Allah, ya akhi, kullu bi fadlakum. يعطيكم العافية. حسناتك ربنا يتقبل منك. الله يبارك فيك. آمين يا رب. طيب جايز، أي سؤال؟ 
ما خليتنا نحن دكتور حسين باقينا لكم حاجه ما في ذير از نو سيلي كويستشن يعني اف اني بودي يعني هاف اني كويستشن ان هيز مايند نوثينج نوت كلير ان هيز مايند دونت يعني دونت شاي اواي اف يو دونت وونت تو سبيك اب سند اي ويل اي ويل ريمين حاتم خلي خلي هنا شوي كده اوكي دكتور تمام تمام كنت اسال سؤال And he start with this one, uh, interesting talk. We hope so. In uh, continuous with Dr. Hussein Hado, uh, to continue at least uh, uh, five to six session on ECG. Shukran jazeera. Wallahi, ya khim, ma andi ma nga ya Adam, lakin iltizamati katira. Illa kana amalikun one session maybe every one to two months. لكن بحاول uh, I will put in my mind إن شاء الله و... وبنسق مع حاتي محاول أدي أدي separate sessions about ECGs. Great, that will be great والله دكتور حسين. بارك الله. Okay, uh, دكتور حسين just one or two questions now in in exercise ECG I see the recent guidelines are actually a little bit downgrading the exercise testing for the sake of uh, imaging imaging uh, stress imaging. instead yeah. of pure exercise testing yeah. so what's your take about this one wallahi ya hatim here taban main la na zay ma gotta like the guidelines they are, are driven by resource and 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 the other important things in 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 western countries they look at what we call patient journey uh, the patient journey is basically from the time the patient referred with specific conditions the time of receiving a specific treatment for anything prolonging this patient journey they try to take it out of the of the of of, of these uh, equations i shall to shorten the patient journey well, that, that, that doesn't the drive behind behind uh, the exercise is is downgraded from time each guideline uh, is going to downgrade the exercise treadmill further but Yani in, in, in our countries and Africa, generally speaking, the limited resources really force us to make exercise test a central point. And, I, and I, if somebody asks my opinion, rather than having a cat lab here and there, I will try to make exercise treadmill available in, in most of big cities and, and towns in Sudan. It is very useful. And it can be a very good filtering tool. But yes, uh, the guidelines is basically going by specificity, sensitivity, and uh, specificity of the test and shortening the patient journey. And, and sometimes if you look at, at, at exercise treadmill, uh, it, is, it is, to be honest, it is labor intense. Yeah, and it required a technician, it required a doctors, uh, uh, and it take long time. And, If after that, all that time, you come with non-conclusive result is not really helpful. So that's why in, 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 in countries where they have a resources to be able to do something more specific, more sensitive, like uh, a stress echocardiogram, or now we have actually a stress MR, MRI and a stress CT. If you can do all this, and come with a specific answer using uh, the resource available for the exercise treadmill, why not? The message we should give to the fellows and to physicians, generally speaking, cardiology physicians in Sudan, it should be that you really use exercise treadmill. Use exercise treadmill as much as you can. Yes, reserve the coronary angiography or invasive studies or other functional studies for those who have a high pre uh, probability uh, but for intermediate risk group exercise treadmill is still very good 
Very good, very good. Yeah, I agree with you so much, Shola, Dr. Hussein. I know the sophistication of the cardiac imaging needs kind of different platform, budgeting issues, logistical issues. So as far as Sudan is concerned, I think we have to be humble uh, because exercise ECG can be made ubiquitous and, and, and it's reasonably objective. Mm. And like Dr. Hussein said, it's, it's kind of a great tool for risk stratification despite the humble sensitivity and specificity, but it's still a great gatekeeping, okay? So it should be made available everywhere in, in, in primary and secondary hospitals. And I think that that's the message from this talk, okay? So this is important. Now, I wonder now, we, we have in, in, in Adbara Hospital, which is a big teaching hospital, they don't have a treadmill test. They yeah. don't have it, you see? Yeah. So, the uh, planning of healthcare. They need to, to take on board the, 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 the opinion of the expert. Those who, who plan for healthcare, most of the time they are not the right people. They just exactly. use things exactly. for, for, for basically uh, show off rather than a true benefit for the patient. Precisely. Precisely. Okay. Allah, Dr. Hussein, we really enjoyed the night with you. And uh, it was so great. And I think the fellows are, now you are a fan, actually. They, uh, they are Look, fans. Excuse me, Dr. Hatim, I have, <laughs> they have questions. Of course you go. Uh, okay, Dr. Um, Dr. Yassin. So just I'm asking about uh, the device or the machine of the treatment. Uh, is there any difference uh, in its component uh, from the, that machine used in the fitness club? Uh, because in the fitness clubs, they are depend on how many kilometers you are running within 30 minutes, something like that. But here, when we are uh, doing the exercise test, we depend on the heart rate, the blood pressure, and, uh, and the med. So is it different in the machine itself, or is it the same? It is the same, but the, 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 the machine of, of uh, like any uh, medical tools, the, the machine for exercise treadmill has more specificity. Uh, it is it, uh, the ability of going and incline and increase the intensity of the work uh, may not be available in the, uh, the, 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 the uh, machines available on for, 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 the, for the lay people. The lay people, most of the time, the uh, amount of workload increase is very minimal and it has very basic uh, specific. It is like uh, when you buy uh, uh, a bike uh, for general use or when you buy a bike for racing it they are look the same but uh, when you come to this specification the one for racing have a very much high spec okay thank you so much and uh, dr hussein what about this uh, the number of leads involved in the st segment depression i i don't see it's included in the duke treadmill score though we know that it's kind of prognostic the other thing is that the stc the ST segment depression that uh, appears face time and recovery. Uh, is that meaningful in terms of prognosis? It, it is meaningful, uh, but not, st not, not, not standalone. That's why I said uh, when it happens late, uh, try to use uh, the, the, the Duke score because the Duke score uh, take uh, with it the, the, the angina, the level uh, of meds where the uh, ST change uh, starting. Uh, that, that's why, why it, 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 it add additional information. Uh, but the quick recovery, uh, quick uh, resolution of the ST change in recovery, uh, indicating this is most likely because of the high intensity of the exercise rather than a true uh, flow limiting coronary artery disease. Lovely, thank you so much. Any further questions? Oh, thank you, Dr. Hatim, Dr. Hussein. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Hussein. Thanks a lot. And uh, hopefully we are going to see you uh, soon, next session, inshallah, as we are going to arrange with you. And we are going to hold you to your promise. We know that you have very busy schedule, but at least like one, three monthly, it's okay for us. Okay? Bismillah, inshallah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, all of you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. Hussein. Thank you, Dr. Hussein.